All right, here we go. Come on. <sighs> Sunshine. To be outside. Yes, Peyton, I know I'm late. I'm sorry. I had a bit of a wardrobe malfunction. I had to change my shirt last minute. Um, but hey, thanks for joining. Tarina, how you doing, love? Thanks for joining. Uh, Pops, how you doing? You know what, Dad? This is just for you. I brought out sunglasses, Dad. Because, well, and I'm going to drop them and break them. Um, good. Uh, Dad's going to call me uh, Neo or Agent Smith because of these sunglasses. The only reason I'm not going to continue to wear them is because they're so polarized. I can no longer see either telephone screen, so I can't see anything. So I'm just going to have to deal with it. But, Dad, that was solely for your benefit. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, those were my Matrix sunglasses for you, Pop. Patty, thanks for joining. Um, all right, everybody. As you can see, I'm outside because why wouldn't I be? Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous out. It's a balmy 15 degrees uh, I'm just readjusting my tray because I'm working on a very small surface I don't have obviously everything that I would in my kitchen today uh, but we're gonna have some fun uh, we're gonna you know Willy Wonka some stuff up a little bit because why not I love my Willy Wonka all right that sounded weird all right first of all it is Tia Tuesday I gotta go back hey Jen how you doing thanks for joining us I gotta pour me a little bit of this delicious cold brew Arabica coffee, Jamaican rum, and Madagascar vanilla deliciousness. All right. Mm. Now, we must be responsible while we consume. So I'm gonna nibble on a snack that I made. And I'm not gonna lie, these aren't the prettiest because it was my first attempt. But I made dark chocolate espresso madeleine the other day. Mm. Mm. So good. And by espresso, I mean espresso. Um, anyway, tasty treat. I will do some gluten-free for you, Jen, if you want. Mm. So rich and goes so well with all of these flavors. And really not hard to do. I was surprised. Anyway. What are we going to talk about today, everybody? Well, of late, I've talked about things like mental health. And we did something original on Fizz Friday last week where we made a cocktail that tasted like something but didn't have any of that flavor ingredient in it, which was always kind of cool. And, you know, stuff like that happens all the time where a bartender will make a cocktail that tastes like grapefruit, but there's no grapefruit in the cocktail. Uh, but it's when you stumble on those things by accident. And sometimes bartenders and mixologists will actually work to create those flavors. They'll say, I want a flavor of blank. Not blank, obviously. That's like fill in the blank. Uh, they'll want something that's... Uh, I want something that tastes like raspberries. But I don't want to use any raspberries in it. How do I create that flavor using spirits and, and juices and teas and bitters and extracts and whatnot? So without actually using any raspberries, create something to taste like fresh raspberries. There's a lot of work that goes into that. Hey, Dar. Hey, uh, Mel from Cloud9. Thanks for joining. Hope you're both having a great day. Um, sipping on a little Tia for Tia Tuesday. In these ancient glasses pop, if you're still on, you might recognize these. They used to sit on a silver tray at Graham's, around a decanter that usually held either Harvey's Bristol Cream or Creme de Menthe. <laughs> I still shudder when I think of that green stuff that she used to feed us. <laughs> but hey, she gave us booze when we were kids, so I was okay with it. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, you know, creating flavors without using an ingredient that has that flavor in it, uh, especially by accident, is always super cool. You're like, Oh, wow, it tastes just like this. I didn't even mean for that to happen. It's those happy accidents. Uh, like, I made some accidental fudge. Um, which sounds kind of like a progressive 70s funk band, really. Accidental fudge. 
so I had tempered some chocolate up for an experiment I was working on, those hot chocolate bombs. And I had some leftover when I was done, and I stuck it in the fridge. And I had also made a chocolate cake. And if you go back and check my Instagram, you'll see that uh, chocolate layer cake I made. It was absolutely delicious. Extremely. I'm not going to say the M word. Hey, Chris. How you doing, buddy? Uh, don't forget to hop on on Friday. I'm going to challenge you to that uh, lemon meringue pie cocktail thing that you made there. It looked delicious, but I got some tips and tricks for you. Um, yeah, so I made that chocolate cake, which was absolutely delicious. Uh, and I had some of that buttercream frosting left over. And I was going through and cleaning out the fridge. I'm like, oh, I have chocolate. Oh, I have chocolate. Well, let's combine the chocolate. And I have a bag of crumbled chocolate. And I put it all in a double boiler. And I brought it all together. And all of a sudden, I was cleaning out the one container. And I licked the spatula. And I'm like, that's buttercream frosting. Crap. That's not all pure chocolate. I can't temper that down and make truffles or whatever. Oh, nice. Glad to hear that, Pop. Um, and then I tasted what was in the double boiler. I'm like, huh, I taste a lot like fudge. Popcorn. Movie popcorn. Movie popcorn. And Apache burger. Oh, Apache burger. Anyway, as I was saying, um, I'm like, it tastes like fudge. So I grabbed a 9x9 nine nine and I lined it with parchment paper and I put it in the, I put this chocolate from the double boiler in to the parchment paper lined pan and I let it set and lo and behold it set up just like Kyle appearing and I made fudge. So I accidentally made fudge so I call it my accidental fudge. Um, like I said, sounds like a funk band. Uh, I'm not sure what their, their number one hit would be though, like the vanilla bean shuffle or I don't know. Um, <laughs> let's not even go down that weird Al Yankovic hole because I have the dad joke sense of humor and we all know where that'll go um, speaking of creating flavors uh, I was and I mentioned this I'm not starting all over for, for you Kyle come on get your priorities in order dude um, thanks Iris I'm glad you like the accidental fudge um, I mentioned last week that I had been not necessarily challenged but motivated and directed to create some cocktails that tasted like chocolate bars. Um, they wanted an Oreo flavored cocktail. And I know there's no Oreo chocolate bar, but there's cookies and cream chocolate bars. Same thing. Uh, uh, an after eight or a York peppermint patty style cocktail, kind of like a, a polar bear shot, but without making it a shot by elevating it to a craft cocktail level, uh, which was always fun. Uh, uh, there was a coffee crisp cocktail that I created, which was a lot of fun because it involved making peanut butter syrup, Kyle. I know you like your peanut butter syrup, Kyle. Um, and the other one, that's what I'm going to make for you today. Um, because spring is coming and we're starting to, as bartenders and, and mixologists and even as human beings start to think about spring flavors and spring ingredients and spring colors, even though I'm wearing this dark burgundy shirt. Like I said, I had a wardrobe malfunction and what I'm working with today is going to stain. So I figured why not wear something that's the same color as what will stain. Hey dude. Hey, hey buddy. All right, guys. Uh, you don't always get to see him, but we have, uh, oh look, we have a guest star. Monty. Hey buddy. Yeah. Hey bud. There we go. Featuring on today, my boy Monty. And he gets his stitches out tomorrow. So I'm always happy about that. Um, and right, there we go. And we're back. Hey, bud. All right. You just sit right there. That's a good boy. Um, yeah. So what I'm working with is going to stain. So why not work with an ingredient? Or why not wear something that's the same color as the ingredient that will stain? That way, if it stains, you won't know. I mean, I'll wash it, but you won't be able to see. Um, oh, that's a good boy. Sorry. Somebody wants a little bit of love and a little bit of attention. I was out running around today, so obviously I wasn't home for him to cuddle with, which means he's going to be a rascal tonight and he's going to be all over me. But I'm okay with that. Um, so yeah, we're going to get right into it. Now, I did uh, a session a while ago. I can't remember if it was a Tuesday or a Friday because days and times and weeks and everything, it's all one big jumble and the space-time continuum doesn't really exist. I've also been streaming too much Star Trek Next Gen during the mornings while I'm looking at emails and admin and stuff. Um, and yes, I've got my shakers out. So we're going to make a cocktail today that tastes like one of my favorite candy bars. Big Turk. Uh, which is, 
it's not authentic Turkish delight. If you know what authentic Turkish delight tastes like, it's it's that rose water jelly that's in a cube, usually covered in powdered sugar. Um, but you can get Big Turk, which is you know chocolate covered Turkish delight. So we're gonna start with Tia Maria. About one and a half ounces of Tia Maria. Now you guys know that I love using tea in my cocktails, and I've talked about Sloan and and how much I love using Sloan teas and whatnot. Uh, I was in Bulk Barn the other day, and I saw tea that in their little tea and coffee section, and I was just like, I think I know exactly what that's going to taste like. Have you ever seen something, an ingredient, you're like, oh, I know exactly what that's going to taste like. Okay, Tarina, if you like that, co if you love Big Turks, you're going to love this cocktail. So I found this tea. It's called Rose Hip and Hibiscus Tea from the Bulk Barn, and oh, golly gee goodness, does that smell good. So I got the tea, and I made some tea, and I tasted the tea, and I'm like, yep, it's exactly what I thought it was going to taste like, and that's when it hit me. I'm like, I can turn that into a Big Turk cocktail. Now, there's two ways of doing it, and the first way I did it was, like I said, I made the tea. So I've got some tea here, uh, but tomorrow I'm doing a training session with um, it's a licensed nail salon, which is a really cool concept. And for the ladies that are watching and listening, get a mani, get a petty, have a cocktail, all at the same time. I think the first one of those that I knew of was called is called Her Majesty's Pleasure on King West in Toronto. It's in uh, it's in between Spadina and Portland. Um, hey, dude, no, no, you can't, no, 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 that's a good boy. Uh, if I start doing this, it's because he's pulling up my arm like Jaws pulling out a body in the water. Um, so in Oakville, there's a place called Yellow Door, and I'm going to be going there tomorrow to train their bar staff on how to make some cocktails and helping them with their spring menu. And I thought, why not introduce this cocktail to them? I'll give them a couple of DiSerrano cocktails, ob, and I'm going to give them the espresso martini, of course. But why not give them something else fun in spring with Tia Maria? And you think, well, how do you make a coffee liqueur nice and light and springy? Boom. Tea. So like I said, I've made the tea. I also did an infusion, which is in here. So I took some of the tea, and I took, that's right, my Vibrova, at Stan the Vodka Man, my Vibrova Vodka. Now today I'm going to combine the two. Okay, so I'm going to take three quarters of an ounce of my infused tea. There we go. And again, I'm working very carefully with this stuff because it stains very, very quickly. All right. And then I'm going to take some of the actual tea. If you're wondering why the difference in color, I let the infusion go a little bit long because when you're working with infused spirits, you want to almost overdo it a little bit so that you can override the alcohol flavor and make the alcohol carry the flavor of what you're infusing. Whereas with a tea, you're just using water so it doesn't have to be quite as strong. Right? You don't want to overbrew your tea, but when you're infusing tea into vodka, you want to override that vodka note with the tea. That's why the color difference. You have to steep it a little bit longer. That actually only took about 20 minutes to half an hour to achieve that as well. And it was two and a bit tablespoons uh, of tea to two cups of vodka. Vibrova Polish rye vodka at that. All right, so I've got all that in there. Now for the secret ingredient, and this is what's really going to put this cocktail over the top, in my opinion. I have here what we call rose water. Now, there's different brands you can get out there, and sadly, mine lost the label. So I'm going to show you its brother. Uh, and you can get this at Starsky's or any store that's got a really good international section. So, I mean, Loblaws might even care. I've just never looked. So this is orange blossom water. Okay, and this is very potent stuff. And, like, it's very, very floral. It's very floral. It, it gets used very sparingly. In fact, typically as bartenders, we would use these, which are teardrop dashers. Now, this is actually just saline, and I'm going to, yes, salt water. I'm actually going to demonstrate so you can see. I'm going to go one, two, three. And you saw how little liquid would go into the cocktail if I was using that with orange blossom water or rose water. So this is my rose water. Like I said, it lost the label. Not sure how. Maybe a sloppy bartender. I don't know. Kids these days. And I'm gonna use a measure called a bar spoon. 
So we've got my bar spoon. Uh, I think it's equivalent to a quarter teaspoon, if I'm not mistaken. I'll double check that and let you know. Uh, so I'm going to use not quite a full bar spoon of this rose water. And it, again, is very, very floral. It's got a bit of a lychee note to it. It's delicious. Quit your whining, you flea bitten moggy. I'm just kidding. We're teasing. We talk like that all the time. We trash talk each other. He trash talks me. I trash talk him. You know, it's a thing. All right, I got my ice. So I'm going to add some ice to my shaker. See, I didn't forget my ice. See, I'm outside, so I can't forget anything because I can't leave you hanging that long. What are my thoughts on egg whites in cocktails? Chris, I love a good egg white, egg white cocktail. I'll say this about them. It's not something you can sit on for too long um, because the, the citric acid in those cocktails will ceviche or cold cook the egg white where it'll change flavor, it'll change texture. Uh, but you need to tune in on Friday because that's one of the hacks you're going to see for that lemon meringue, po lemon meringue pie cocktail for your lady. All right, so I've got in here, I've got my Tia Maria. I've got my rose water. I've got my tea. I've got my infused vodka. I'm just going to put it all together. I'm going to back up and give it a shake so you can see a good shake. Plus, you know, exercise. All right, here we go. Whew. All right, there we go. Now, I'm gonna double strain this cocktail. So I've got my Hawthorne strainer, I'm gonna add my fine strainer. What that's gonna do is that's gonna catch any of those little ice chips that broke off the cubes while I was shaking my cocktail. And I'm now realizing I chose the wrong glass, but that's okay. All right, there we go. I'll just set that aside on my bar mat. So there we go. There we have the Big Turk, or as I'm going to call it for this menu, roses and chocolate, because ladies love roses and chocolate. Am I right? Oh, yeah. You get the rose hip with the rose water. You get that sweetness of the hibiscus. And it's weird because hibiscus being a flower, it's actually very, very fruity. Um, and you get the vanilla and the coffee, and it kind of becomes chocolatey. Now, for garnish on this, not going to lie, uh, I kind of ate the garnish. Um, I was actually going to use a skewer of pieces of mini Big Turk. Um, but... In creating this cocktail and in doing taste comparisons of the cocktail, um, I kind of hate my garnish. Shh. So for a little bit of flavor balance, because there isn't a lot of acidity in this cocktail, I am going to add... Haha, I ate my original garnish. I had a backup garnish. Three nice, big, plump, ripe blackberries. There we go. So as you're sipping on this cocktail that tastes like a Big Turk, you can munch on those blackberries. You're going to get some really nice, bright flavors. You're going to get a little bit of acidity from them, some brightness. And that's going to help balance off the sweetness of the rose water and the hibiscus and that Tia Maria. Beautiful vanilla coffee chocolatey nut. You know what? I'm just going to... Here, look at this. I'm playing with my food, Mom. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, this is good. All right. Mmm. I'm just going to drop the last one in there and let it soak. That's right, cocktail soaked blackberries. Oh, so tasty. So, you helped. Help eat it. Help drink it. No, she does help. Um, I was going to say something else and I got distracted. Oh, yeah, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to taste a little bit of this on its own. Now, when you're infusing things, like I said, especially neutral spirits like vodka, you are going to get a bit of that vodka flavor because all vodkas have flavor. And I'm not going to go into good spirits versus bad and warm versus cold and warm versus hot, etc. You know what I'm talking about. So I've got this beautiful, beautiful spirit here. 
I still get the dryness from that Polish rye vodka. But it's bright. It's got all kinds of flavor. It's delicious. You know what? Waste not, want not. There we go. I'm just going to throw that in the cocktail. Now, does that throw my cocktail off balance? Maybe a little bit. But that's okay. I've got that recipe. Hey, Stan, how you doing? We were just talking about you, dude. Uh, so I made a cocktail today that tastes like a Big Turk chocolate bar. Mm. It's so good. And to help get that flavor, I have a bit of rose hip and hibiscus tea infused Vibrova. <coughs> Cheers. Um, so there you go. That's for you, Stan the man. Uh, I will send you the recipe so you can use that in your accounts as well. Uh, good to see you, dude. Um, you and I need to connect because I have a package for you, like I said, uh, via email. Kick it up a notch. Bam. Bam. What are you? Emerald, Kyle? When did you become Emerald? Kick it up a notch. Gosh. No, I'm just kidding. I love Kyle. This is so good. It legit does taste like you're eating a Big Turk chocolate bar Trina. So if you guys haven't had a Big Turk, go get one, try it, and you're going to be like, damn, I can make that in a cocktail now because I'm going to give you the recipe. It's going to go in the comments once I post this. Uh, it's going to go on YouTube where I post everything else. Um, I'm just going to sit here in silence and enjoy some sunshine. No, I don't really want to do that because you don't want dead air, right? Um... Is everybody loving this weather? This is fantastic, isn't it? I'm so glad it's like this because I'm tired of snow and gray and dull and blah and ugly and messy and sloppy and whatever. Um, I'm sorry, Tarina, but I'm not really sorry. But I'll send you the recipe so you can make it. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot. Madeline. Oh, oh wait, chocolate and snack. It snowed out there last night, Kyle. Oof. I am so sorry. Mm. Hey, don't have to worry about shoveling rain, Peyton. Mmm. Tasty Madeleine. Tasty cocktail. Winning. Hashtag winning. Um, actually, no, I'm not really winning because I still have like three hours of work to do after I get off here. Uh, and like I said, I'm training a, a team tomorrow. And then I have deliveries to make. Um, I have textbooks to drop off to people like Stan and, and some of my other colleagues, uh, like Jamie Johnson, uh, our Balvenie brand ambassador, whom I made a cocktail with a few weeks ago. Uh, you'd be surprised, Peyton. Uh, there have been times I've needed to aggressively sweep to get to my barbecue. I don't have a shovel anymore, so I have to aggressively sweep. Uh, so it does happen. Make a take five. Kyle, I don't think I can. I don't think I've seen a Take Five candy bar here in Ontario in I don't know how many years. I will take a look and I will Google it and see what's in it, uh, and I will do my best. Uh, I'm not one to shy away from a challenge. Um, but before I go, because you know, I'm not always going to make just one cocktail, am I? Yes, Iris. First world problems that I can't find a Take Five candy bar. Hmm. All right, I'm just going to set that aside. And it's been gluten, so nobody else can have any. <laughs> That's right, I have another glass. See, I didn't actually forget anything this time. I've got more ice. Some of which I just spilled onto my lap. But that's okay. I've got my Tia Maria. Now, that's right, guys, I'm going mind eraser on you. Just remember, this one's an easy one. It's equal parts. So you're going one ounce Tia Maria, one ounce of vodka. Obviously, I'm going to go with my Vibrova. Vibrova. Now, the actual recipe, there's two different versions of this recipe out there. One calls for Amaretto, obviously, Di Sarono, because we are the original Amaretto. One doesn't, and then you top it with soda. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to stick with the theme of the day. That's right. I'm going with 
Uh, not quite three quarters of an ounce. So two thirds or in bar terms, a shy three quarters or a fat half. I'm going to go with a fat half. So just over half an ounce of that hibiscus and rosehip tea infused vibrova. And you should see, look at those beautiful layers, right? And then I have what I think is the cutest little can of club soda ever from Fever Tree. Like, look at how wee it is. This is so cute. It's tiny, it's teeny, it's cute. Um... Well, I've got a table out here, Pops. It's just still packed away because, you know, 80 kilometer an hour winds. Hey, Marco, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for joining us. All right, I'm going to top it. And wow, that actually fit that whole tiny little can of club soda. <laughs> I've got my spoon out here, so I'm just going to give this a quick stir. Blend those flavors together. Cheers, everybody. This is a riff on the mind eraser. Or, you know what? Looking forward to spring. I'm just going to say that. Oh, yeah. That's delicious. That's so refreshing. That Tia Maria is still there. That rose hip, that hibiscus, and then that Vibrova, that regular Vibrova that I put in there, just sort of stands up and becomes the backbone. And that's the phrase I love to use in these, I know, because that's what it's about. It's about standing back, that that more high-octane, high-proof spirit, taking on... <sighs> yeah, Dad, I know. Uh, he's still around. Bobby's still around. Taking on the, the support structure of holding up the other flavors in the spirit, even though that hibiscus vodka was made with Vibrova, and I put in Vibrova. So this is, you know, Stan, this is all you, buddy. Um... This is delicious, man. I'm going to pre-bottle one minus the club soda for next time I see you, and I'll drop it off when I drop off your textbook for our class that starts April 1st. So I'm taking a course. Who knew? Dad? Look at that, Dad. Me? The guy who hated school? I'm taking a course. Okay, fine. I'm doing my W set 2 in spirits. I'm taking a booze course. Are we surprised? Mm. So good, so easy, so refreshing. Uh, I'm going to leave it at that, guys. Uh, I have a bit of a mess here to clean up. Um, sun's going down. Uh, I have, like I said, multiple hours of work still to do. It is... Oh, stop. Okay, Stan, I love that you joined, but if you're going to tell the dad, dad jokes, save them for your casts. Let me tell my own dad jokes. Don't need your dad jokes intruding on my dad jokes. I'm just kidding. I love your dad jokes. So for those who didn't see it, Stan just said that this cocktail is outstanding. Uh, I'm going to say something that only, I think, two people watching, Stan and my father would know. Stan, you meathead, you. <laughs> and if anybody else out there gets it, shh. Let's let's not annoy the snowflakes that are watching. Peyton, what? Oh, sorry, did I say that out loud? Uh, anyway, guys, I'm out. Have a great week. Uh, enjoy the sunshine while you can, safely, of course. Masks, six feet. Wash your hands, sanitize. Stay away from people that aren't obeying the rules. Uh, if you go to a patio, and I'm not going to lie, I've been to a, a, a patio already uh, since they reopened on Friday. Be kind. Tip 25% or better. Wear your mask when you're not eating or drinking. Don't ask to see their face. Don't ask to take their mask off. Don't ask for tables of 10. Obey the rules. If you don't know the rules, look them up before you go out so that you don't go out there and look like an idiot a meathead when you go and try and sit on a patio. But most of all, please be kind. Be polite. Our industry was given less than 24 hours to basically start from scratch. And I know some people, they got the announcement at 6 o'clock. They're at work by 6.30 and they're until 2 in the morning to open at noon. 
Okay, my good friend Robin is the bar manager of a place down at King in Portland. It's called Little Sister. It's Dutch Indonesian food, and the food is fabulous. Yes, that's where I went on Friday. Uh, Stan, go see Robin. The stuff, the food there is amazing. The cocktails are definitely what you'd expect from Robin Wynn. Um, he was there from 6.30 until 2 a.m., and then he was back there at 11 to open for noon to serve people until 9 and then do it all again the next day. Uh, and they, as soon as it, like they had a wait, and there were lineups of people on the streets waiting to get onto patios, and they were waiting without masks, and people are walking by without masks, and they're not distancing. Hey, Zest, how you doing? Uh, uh, I didn't know you were coming. I didn't use your glass today, but I promise you, if you guys hop on on Friday, I will feature some of your glassware on Friday for a special cocktail I'm making for one of my colleagues uh, named Chris. Mm. If you guys have anything new in stock, send me shots. Um, I'm always looking for fun new things. Um, and the wood-burning pizza oven. Uh, we need to chat about that. Because, you know, it's patio season and wood-burning pizza. Why not? Um, as people shake their fist at me. Uh, <laughs> and in about eight seconds, given the delay, I'm going to get that fist shaken at me. I know I will. Um, but yeah, please be kind to people. Okay? Be kind to the industry. Uh, they're exhausted. They are up until a couple, up until yesterday, they weren't included in phase two. Fortunately, they're now going to be in phase two of the vaccine, which is great. Because coming into contact with people the way you do in that industry, and believe me, I know I've worked in it for 20 years, uh, you go through a lot and you touch a lot and you can't help it. Uh, and you deal with so many things and so many people. If anybody needs, at the very least, the mental reassurance that they've had a shot, they've had one of two, and they're getting their number two, good. It'll put them at ease. They'll be friendlier with you. You need to be friendlier with them. I've already heard about some horrible instances of people insisting on tables of 10 and asking sommeliers and servers to take their masks off and stuff. And that's why I brought it up. Because, yes, it's happened. Whenever you see a PSA... It's because some idiot has tried it. Like, in our building, there's a sign by the handicap button to open the automatic handicap button door opener. It says, please use your hand or your elbow, not your foot. They put that sign up there because some meathead, no offense, Stan, I'm not talking about you, uh, some idiot, some dumbass, some asshat, kicked the automatic door opener and busted it more than once. That's why they say these things. So please, follow the rules. Be kind. Tip well. Because these people are busting their butts. They're putting themselves at risk. And it's for more than what they would usually get. Okay? Um, they're working in a hazardous way. They need to be rewarded. So please, treat them well. Um, and I'm going to stop my rant there. Otherwise, I'm going to be like Dennis Miller. So on that note, I am out of here. I'll see you later on Friday at 6 p.m. for Fizz Friday. And I said, there we go. Done.